Gallagher shot turned out by Flurry a couple of times. He searches for the puck. He's got it. Riley Smith all the way across for Holden. He scores! Nick Holden makes it four to one. Now point blows oh. to the net. A big collision with the Islanders goaltender Falamov. And then across for Hedman. Score! 4 1. Tampa Bay power play goal. Welcome to another edition of Our Line Starts, fueled by Duncan, a very, very fancy special edition of Our Line Starts. Makeup, suits, the set. Jonesy brought dessert for himself. <laughs> Three cupcakes. And no one else. That's a Keith Jones hat trick there, Liam. <laughs> Gordy's got nothing on me. I can eat all three while we're doing this show. Look at those. Eight three Fabulous. before the show, three during the show, and then three after the show. Yeah. All right, Jonesy's here. Sharpie's here. We've got the semifinals underway. Let's start in the East. 1-1 at this point. Isles with a great effort in that opening game. And then Tampa Bay responds. Sharpie, I'll start with you. you have a read at all on this series? Not yet. I expect it to be a long series, and that's what it looks like it's shaping up to be. 1-1. Uh, New York Islanders can probably feel pretty good about themselves going home, having won a game in Florida. Not an easy place to do that. Uh, I did like Tampa's response in game two. A lot of scrums after the whistles. I always thought it was the Columbus Blue Jackets and the opponents that they were playing up against that were starting these scrums and fights after whistles trying to pick on Tampa Bay. I'm starting to think they enjoy that and it makes them raise their game a little bit. Nikita Kucherov with three primary assists, all beautiful plays. Uh, looks like he's I mean, we'll get to the con Smythe in a little bit, yeah. but to me, he's been the best player in hockey right now. And for the Islanders, they don't mind that style of play either. So when they returned to home ice, they did what they wanted to do. They won one game in Tampa, which is not an easy place to win. Uh, they have to feel pretty confident that they can, you know, make a dent in this series and their fans are going to be going wild. The more aggressively that they play and the more disciplined at the same time, I guess assertively would probably be the right word for it. Uh, the better that they're going to be and the more lively that place is going to be if you can imagine it being any livelier than it's been so far. So yeah. looking forward to watching to see exactly what happens in game three. Assertively. Yeah, that would be better, right? That's Because then you're not like too far over the edge. Yeah. But you've, you've got a game plan. I didn't know that was uh, a vocabulary word you had. I don't know where it came from, Liam. It just, uh, just kind of hit me, man. Yeah. Well, well done. You used it correctly. So. Thank you. Nice. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I can tell you the fans will be crazy. You know, I uh, brought my boys to the Islanders game six uh, against Boston. And Good experience for them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Learn a few new I words? I was the most nervous person in that entire building, just watching them look at everyone else. A lot of new <laughs> phrases that they then shared the next morning with my wife. So <laughs> Blame like, it on dad. Yeah, Blame exactly. it on dad. Completely my fault. But, uh, no, it'll be a crazy atmosphere there. That series tied 1-1. I don't think a lot of people gave Montreal going into the series a whole lot of a chance uh, against Vegas, and Vegas came right out in the series and basically showed you why. Carey Price makes fantastic save after fa fantastic save, and it's like it almost didn't matter at this point, Sharp. No, I don't think it's going to matter, to be quite honest with you going forward. I like Montreal. I like where they're at. Uh, getting to the final four in the semifinals, but to me, they're the overmatched team in this series. Vegas is bigger, stronger, deeper. Uh, I didn't even like Vegas's game one, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I think Montreal is in trouble, but uh, it's a playoff series. Anything can happen as bad as that game was in game one. If Montreal can find a way to win in Vegas's building, they're going home with a the split. They'll probably feel a lot better themselves, but to me, this is a mismatch, and Vegas is going to win. And when you're the underdog, like Montreal is, having a goaltender like Carey Price at least gives you hope. And he can steal a period. It's tough to steal a game against a Vegas Golden Knights team that just keeps on coming. Their defense is very sound, though. If Petrie's able to return and, you know, play some big minutes and not get knocked out early, then you give the Canadians a little bit more of a chance. And if they return to Montreal and Phil Deneau can shut down the top line, which was shut down in game number one, then you're talking about a Canadians team that might have some measure of hope. But I'm with you. I, I think Vegas gets the job done. I'm just not sure if they get it done quickly. Is that why you didn't think Vegas was at the top of their game? Was it just top line productivity? Uh, uh, or? Maybe. I think it's just the first game of a, uh, a playoff series, especially period one. I didn't think Vegas was at their best, and that turned out to be Montreal's strongest period of the game. Sometimes there's a feeling out process. They just finished playing Colorado, who comes at you as hard as anybody in the league. They got speed everywhere. I loved how they played in that series. So maybe that period one was just let's see what these kids got. Um, it'll be a hard-fought series we know that I just think Vegas is the much better team did you get into any, to any third round series where it was much easier than the 
second or the first round? Uh, no, and it's probably because this year the schedule's all mixed around and crazy. We figured that this third round was going to be an interesting one. Teams that haven't seen each other all season. But yeah, there were a couple maybe in the second round that became a favorable matchup for us. But having said that, even when you're on the team that is supposed to win the series. It's still a playoff series. You're still playing hockey. You got to go out there and, and not let bad habits creep in. I don't think Vegas is going to do that. I think they handle this series easily. And Vegas, uh, you'd have to say since that, what, first game against Colorado and then maybe one period in game two against the Avs, since that point, they've been trending upward. And the Montreal Canadiens are a team that's, let's face it, I mean, no one thought the North was a great division. I thought they were the weakest division in hockey, and the Montreal Canadiens finished fourth uh, out of the teams that qualified. And they were 18 points behind the Leafs. So they made it this far. We'll see if they can make it a series. Carey Price certainly gives them a little bit of hope, but uh, all Vegas in game one. Let's take a look at the odds right now, powered by PointsBet Sportsbook, and it's all about the con Smythe. And there's nothing like an opening period of hockey against Montreal where you're feeling a team out. You can because you have Marc-Andre Fleury in net, and he allows you to do that by making 12 saves. After that, though, it's the guy who's probably going to win the Vezina Trophy, or the guy who is the Vezina Trophy winner, Andre Vasilevsky. And then Nikita Kucherov, who led the playoffs in points last year, sat out the regular season with an injury, comes back, and is lighting it up once again. So at this point, let's just talk value. If you're going value purely, who do you like here? I like Mark Stone because I'm not sure that Tampa is going to beat the New York Islanders after they lost home ice. So I would lean towards Vegas. I feel, feel more confident that they will win. I'm not going to take Mark Andre Fleury at plus 125. Stone's got reasonable value. You know, you bet your 100 and you're going to win eight. Uh, that's okay by me. And I think Fleury, of course, has been their best player so far. But who's to say Stone doesn't come up with a great series against Montreal and another good one in the finals. So I'll go with Stone. Always safe to pick the goaltenders of the winning team. It's just difficult to figure out who's going to win the Stanley Cup this year. I anticipate Vegas getting to the finals. The other series is a toss-up to me. What's interesting about the Conn Smythe Award is that, to me, it's won in these last two rounds, always. You know, it doesn't matter if you have five or six goals in that first round. The games get bigger as we move along. So Braden Point sitting there at plus 1,000. Yep. Might be someone I'd take a look at. Matthew Barzell way down at the bottom, 1,500. There's got to be some other Islanders better value than plus 1,500 that might creep into the conversation if they happen to get by Tampa Bay as well. So um, I would put my cash, Jonesy, on Braden Point right now, and I'd Plus 1,000 for him. Varlamov at plus 800 right there with Stone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're just listening to this and not watching these guys in our makeup and suits on this gorgeous set. <laughs> uh, it's plus 125 for Marc Andre Fleury right there. He's the odds on favorite. Not on the list, though, is the man who won the Consumite last year. Yeah, Victor, Victor Hedman, who now has a goal, and yeah. which he did not have in this playoffs, even though he had a ton of assists. Yep. And if it's going to come down to the last two rounds, which it often does, why would you not want to look there? Yeah, there's good value there, too. And he just came off a, a huge performance where he got on the board, at least in the goal-scoring department. He's got a ton of assists, and he's out there against the best uh, line of the opposition every night. He's one of the most noticeable players on a nightly basis. I guess people are banking on the chances of winning back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Con Smice, or, I guess, plays against him a little bit right now, but there's no doubt that he should be in that conversation. Remember how difficult it was last year to pick the Con Smythe winner after Tampa Bay won it? They yeah. had the best goalie, best defense. Defenseman, two or three of the best forwards up front. So it went to Hedman. Uh, I'm looking at Petrangelo's not on that list either. When I watch yeah. Vegas play, he's a very important player out there. Seems to get better in the big game. So he'd be a guy I'd look for too. Probably got some good value on that bet. And I think he's a guy that I think we all believe is probably the runner up when St. Louis won the cup a few years ago and Ryan O'Reilly walked away with the Con Smythe trophy. All right, time now for a cold brew check fueled by Duncan. We're talking about a hiring here. Gerard Gallant hired by the New York Rangers. So he joins Chris Drury. Rangers, you look at this team. You hire Gerard Gallant, a guy who was with Vegas and won the Jack Adams Award as the coach of the year back in 2018. The Rangers, now it's going to be a different playoff system. We'll go back to mm -hmm. the division system uh, that we previously knew. Rangers a playoff team at this point. I think they will be next year. I love the way they've been progressing, and maybe he's the guy that puts them over the top. He's been great in the past at getting teams to meet expectations. Uh, it's still kind of confusing on why Vegas had let him go uh, because he was doing a terrific job with them, and he did an amazing job the first year. So I would expect him to have an immediate influence on their team, and they're chasing the Islanders. They want to be where the New York Islanders are this year, and Gerard Gallant has been there before. He's got a wealth of experience both as a head coach and as a player, and he's honest. 
I mean, you're going to get an honest effort out of your team, and you're going to play with a little bit more of an edge because that's how Gerard Gallant played the game. I think he's a very good choice for the New York Rangers. And they could use a little bit of an edge. You'd have to say the New York Rangers. Maybe that was one thing that was missing. Are they missing a piece, though? Outside, someone on the ice, a position that you're looking at? Yeah, it's tough to say, to be quite honest with you. When I watch this Rangers story unfold, it'll be interesting to see what kind of players come in and leave this organization. It's been a couple years of just kind of stock in the cupboards. Right now, now that there's a new GM, he's found his coach, expectations are clearly raised. It's interesting that Gallant uh, got this job shortly after the World Championships where he was the head coach of Team Canada. I know Team Canada is usually the favorite in these World events and best on best but this wasn't team canada's best roster and they were able to pull out a gold medal excellent job by those players and coach i love his style of play he's usually got physical hard-nosed straight line players they've got plenty of guys in new york that can make all kinds of plays so lots of moves coming in uh, new york and i would anticipate them being in the playoffs next year do you do whatever you can to try to get jack eichel i i don't know if i'm the rangers that i have to do that um, I think you'd have to probably give up too much. Uh, I, I actually am impressed by where they are at in their evolution. I think they quickly turn things around. They have star power in Panarin. I mean, Eichel would be a game changer, no doubt, but boy, you'd have to give up a lot. A you'd be yeah. giving up some of your you know, first or second overall picks that you recently had. Yeah. So I don't think the Rangers are a team that has to do that. I, I would have to be a great deal if I was going to make that. I just think it'd be a huge deal going the other way to the Buffalo Sabres. I'm sure Adam Fox would be asked for uh, uh-huh. by Kevin Adams, the general manager of Buffalo. It looks like... Uh, there'd be some key pieces out of this core group for the New York Rangers that would be going out the door. So I, I don't see Jack Eichel necessarily coming in, but we'll see. It'll be an exciting offseason anyway. Yeah, and it's not like they're that far off. I mean, if the Rangers pretty much would have been in the playoffs in any other division except for the one that they were in this year. And now they have a new head coach in Gerard Gallant. And that'll do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Our Line Starts Fueled by Duncan. We will see you next time, but not here at this fancy set and not with these suits and not with this makeup. Have a good day.